For those of you who don't know me, um, my name is um, Ian Young, and I have a confession to make at the outset, which is that I'm a medic. And if you want to boo at this stage, it's, uh, it's okay. I can, I can um, cope with that. But I would like to reassure you that um, I am very familiar with um, social workers, in fact, and have um, had quite a lot of interactions with social workers um, over, over the years and continue to do so. So I, I certainly don't want you to think that I'm unfamiliar with your concerns and the types of pressures that you have to deal with. Um, I was asked if I would talk a little bit about um, research in health and social care. Um, as indicated, um, unfortunately, I can't stay for the whole day due to um, other commitments, but I'll certainly be hanging around to the coffee break and very happy to chat to anybody who wants to at that stage. I was looking at the bingo card um, when it was introduced there and I was thinking, how can I win? And of course, the way is for me to go right through all those words. <laughs> <laughs> Circling them in the next 15 minutes. But no, that would spoil the fun. But I, I would like to wish you all good luck um, in terms of um, taking part. And there are many benefits, I think, to the exercise in terms of encouraging your concentration <laughs> as the day goes on. So... Um, Research um, is a core function of health and social care. That's something which I believe very strongly and have done throughout my career um, in the hospital and as an academic. And I'm sure that's something that you all believe as well, and I hope so. That's partly the reason why you're here today. It's not there as something that we should pay lip service to, but it, it's there as a statement which should really underpin a lot of clinical and professional practice right across the field of health and social care. We all aspire to practice in a way that brings to bear best evidence on the needs and concerns of our clients or patients. Research should address specific patient and population needs. It can help to facilitate early access to innovative treatments and care. Um, it helps to attract and retain the best staff. And as a health and social care system in Northern Ireland, we aspire to have the best staff in any health and social care system in the world. And something which is of great importance to our current minister and which therefore we shouldn't shy away from thinking about is that research should directly and indirectly benefit our economy. Now sometimes those precepts are very obvious and I guess you all probably get a little bit frustrated um, at time to time from for the huge attention which gets paid to any apparent breakthrough in medical research and the relative lack of attention to, um, that gets paid to the consequences of research elsewhere and the health and care social in the system. My view is that, that all research is um, important and brings benefit and needs to be valued. Um, some things are very dramatic um, the work developing new treatments for cystic fibrosis, which has been led by medical researchers in Northern Ireland, has the potential to transform the medical care of patients with that condition, albeit at a cost of about £200,000 a year um, for the drug concerned. But the research which we're interested in, um, in the HSC R&D division, spans much more broadly than that. The high profile stuff which is focused at the intensive medical end of the spectrum is just one small component of what we're interested in. And what we seek is for research to underpin the full breadth of care that extends across the health and social care system. And there are many examples, I think, of where research which is being led from social work contributes to that environment and 
I could have highlighted lots, but um, you know, in particular, I had the chance to speak last year at the launch of the Drug and Alcohol Research Network, an important initiative um, focused on the needs of individuals in our population um, dealing with the problems associated with drug abuse and alcohol intake, and which has the potential to make a real difference to the care of those patients. And it's work which is drawing on best international practice. It's seeking to make um, linkages with researchers in other countries and to work as part of broader networks with other professionals nationally and internationally. I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, funding for health and social care research and how we spend it just so that you understand the infrastructure in which research in Northern Ireland currently operates. And the first thing I want to say about it is that while we support research across a very broad spectrum, from really quite basic science through to qualitative research um, designed to look at patient experience, the focus is towards the clinical end of the spectrum. So we're less interested in funding basic science because we think there's lots of money for that elsewhere in the system. We're very interested in funding research directly addressing the needs of patients and clients in Northern Ireland. Having said that, um, out of the four devolved nations in the UK, we spend the smallest amount per head of population on research in health and social care, and that restricts our ability as a funder to support the full breadth and extent of work that we would like to do. So part of my job is to act as an advocate um, with government for research expenditure and spend. To put it in context, at its very best, back in around 2008, we were spending less than 50% per head of population and is spent in England. Now this creates challenges. It means that we simply can't do everything that we would like to do. To put an absolute number on it, then we currently have around 10.3 million pounds annually in the HSC R&D division to spend. And there's an extra approximately two and a half to three million, which goes directly into NIHR in England to allow researchers from Northern Ireland to participate in NIHR funding calls and schemes. And again, there have been examples in the last year of substantial research programmes with social work involvement, which have drawn on that larger pool of NIHR funding, um, which is now accessible. And if anyone's interested and how they can obtain that sort of funding, then we're very happy to talk to you within the HDSC R&D division and to help to support you to try to develop high quality applications. In terms of where the money goes, you'll see that approximately half of it goes on infrastructure. Now that's establishing supporting networks and mechanisms which will facilitate research projects. And a smaller amount goes on actually funding research. So fellowships and research programs, um, which are funded through a range of calls, which go out on an annual basis. In addition to this, we do have a certain amount of reserve or discretionary spend, which we can use to support researchers who are particularly innovative or potentially important ideas. And we're particularly interested in providing small scale funding to demonstrate feasibility or conduct pilot studies, which may then lead on to something more substantial. A number of you will know that in addition to funding that type of work, we also fund knowledge transfer. So where there has been research which has been carried out in an area and which has demonstrated real benefit 
to patients or clients, then we will fund programmes of work to roll that out elsewhere within Northern Ireland to transfer the knowledge so that the benefit is spread and brought to a wider range of individuals. Now, to support that, we work within existing infrastructure. All of this information is available on the HSC R&D Division website. Some of you will have worked through these structures, but in particular, I will highlight uh, a couple, the Public Health Research Network and the other Northern Ireland Clinical Research Network is there to facilitate clinical research studies involving patients or clients. It provides nurses and other staff who can work on projects which are adopted through the networks and therefore provide a way to test high quality ideas which have succeeded in attracting funding um, from funders. What's the, the impact of the funding that we spend on research? Now, first of all, there is a financial or economic benefit of spending on research. And this is important whenever I go to talk to government and say, well, you should be giving more money to research, then these figures um, matter. They may matter rather less to yourselves, but they're important as a lever when um, looking for investment. And we know from an extensive independent evaluation of HSCR and the office spend that we um, bring in an additional four pounds in direct funding for roughly every one pound that we give to research in Northern Ireland. So there is an important economic benefit. What is more important, I think, probably from your perspective, and we place at least equal value on it, if not more, is the impact that our projects make on policy or practice. Now, whenever we talk to researchers, around 20% of projects claim a direct impact on policy or practice. That might seem quite a, a modest number um, to you. Um, I think it's probably realistic, given the timescales that we are looking at. Um, if you look at the science of impact, then what you see is that individual pieces of research may take up to 25 years for their full impact to translate through into health or social care. So we'd expect that percentage to increase as we follow projects over a long period of time. In addition to that, not every project will have impact. Some projects primarily add to the knowledge base rather than having direct impact. But work in social care, I think in particular, has the potential to create impact and therefore is attractive to us in terms of funding. We think that one of the keys to success in research is partnership and multi-professional, multidisciplinary working. Most of our most successful research teams draw on individuals from a range of professional backgrounds and could, I think, benefit from even broader involvement. It's also good for Northern Ireland researchers to embed themselves in networks, locally, nationally and internationally, in terms of learning from other cultures and jurisdictions and bringing best practice from other areas and testing it within the context of our health and social care system, just as others do with things that we have developed here. If there are three kind of themes which underpin our desire to fund research, they're in these areas, and these I encourage you to reflect on as you think perhaps in the future about developing research proposals. Firstly, it's important to address patient and client needs. And that will often involve um, patients and clients right from the outset of a research project. 
We like to see patients and clients contributing to setting research priorities. We like to see evidence that they've been involved in the design of research protocols and that they're involved in a meaningful way in the conduct of the research right from beginning and end and in its subsequent dissemination <coughs> and knowledge transfer. Secondly, we like to see research which is of high quality. To me, that means nationally or internationally competitive. Now, that's a high benchmark, but that's what we are seeking to support and develop and fund. And right across the full spectrum of the work we're interested in, certainly something we say consistently is that we will not fund research unless we think it's of at least nationally competitive quality or addressing a unique patient or client need in the Northern Ireland context. And finally, um, it's good if research can be seen to support economic development. Now you might think, how does that apply to us? But I think it applies very strongly to um, research which is led from social care and social work. Um, I think that helping individuals to draw less on the resources of the health and social care system, helping them to live happier and more productive lives as members of society um, produces an important economic um, benefit and one that we sometimes forget and um, should not do so. So let me wish you um, every success for the rest of the day. I'm going to enjoy as long as I can participate. Happy to chat to you, any, any of you at lunchtime. And I want you to remember that the HSC R&D office um, is there to help and support you develop research ideas. And you shouldn't be too shy about approaching us and coming to talk to us. Thank you very much.